Joining us now from the Michigan Science Center uh, is, pa is Paulette Epstein, their planetarium director and astronomer, joining us on the Megacast to talk about all things volcanoes. Paulette, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. So you're in, a, of course, a virtual set for those at home. That's not an actual volcano behind you, but you'll be able to see plenty of uh, real, vol real volcanoes and, th and that footage uh, of it in action and learn more about volcanoes at the Michigan Science Center very soon. Uh, they're, they're showing uh, The Fires of Creation, an IMAX movie that'll start airing later on this week, this Saturday, February 19th. Tell us a little bit uh, about that film and some of the other interesting activities that are there at the Michigan Science Center about volcanoes. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as you said, we're going to be starting to play Volcanoes, Fires of Creation uh, very soon here at the Michigan Science Center. Uh, so it'll be begin on Saturday in our 4D theater, our Toyota Engineering 4D theater. And the film is all about volcanoes and gives us a really close up look of some of the most amazing and deadly things on the planet. So the really cool thing about it being in our 4D theater is you actually feel like you are up close and personal with those volcanoes. So our 4D theater is the one that pokes you in the back, uh, sprays you in the face. We have non-pyrotechnic sparks in that theater. Um, and so when you, uh, when you are watching the movie, you really feel like you are a part of it. And the whole room is rumbling uh, during some of those, those volcanoes. And it is a truly amazing film um very beautiful and stunning um and really feeling like you're part of the action yeah so let's take a step back everyone uh, seems to know what a volcano is uh, or at least you know the basic functions of an active volcano at least but for those that aren't sure uh, how do volcanoes form and, and what function do they serve geologically yeah, absolutely. So volcanoes usually form on the the faults between plates in, in our um, sort of geologic world. So you have the Earth, and the Earth is made up of these different plates, and those plates are sort of moving around. So you may know that the Earth didn't always look like it does right now. A long, long, long time ago, it actually had a single continent. And we call that Pangaea, the supercontinent. And these plates have sort of been moving around and adjusting because they're basically just floating on a, la a layer of sort of magma. So they move around and adjust. And sometimes they'll adjust in such a way that it allows some of that magma to come up to the surface of, as lava. So that's actually where a volcano is forming. Um, the volcanoes that we see most often are usually in the ring of fire which is all around the Pacific Ocean. Um, we have active volcanoes in Hawaii, uh, here in the United States. There is a dormant super volcano in Yellowstone. Um, so that one, there is some volcanic activity, but it's not actually lava coming up to the surface. Um, and uh, we have volcanoes all through that Pacific Ocean as well. There was one that went off just a couple of weeks ago um, and took out travel uh, in the in the Pacific Ocean. So um, volcanoes are, are happening all around us and it's really just because those plates are sort of moving around and there's gaps that can, can be created so that magma can come up and come out the surface as lava. Really cool, really dangerous. We're joined by Paulette Epstein, uh, who is a astronomer and planetarium director over at the Michigan Science Center. Joining us on the Megacast, uh, they're showing of no, they're showing of the film The Fires of Creation, which is an IMAX movie at the Michigan Science Center, begins airing uh, Saturday, February nineteenth, over there at the Michigan Science Center. Uh, you can learn more information on the Michigan Science Center's website uh, at uh, mi-sci. Dot org. That is Michigan Science Center's website, mi-sci.org. Uh, and so, uh, Paul, uh, talking about volcanoes, uh, you mentioned that one just recently went off in, in the Pacific off, uh, off of the islands of Fiji and Tonga. Uh, and, and, but we have a lot of volcanoes all around the world. You mentioned even the super volcano that's located right here in the U.S. Uh, at Yellowstone National Park. So what causes a volcano to go, to go dormant? You kind of mentioned what, what causes it to go active. What causes it to go dormant and why for so long do we often see these volcanoes have next to no activity? Yeah, absolutely. So for example, the, the volcanoes in Hawaii, for Hawaii, um, the hole is actually moving around and that's how the, the 
uh, islands of Hawaii were actually created because it was here for a long time and then the tectonic plate moved a little bit and the next island was formed by this magma coming up and then the next island it's because of the movement of these tectonic plates sometimes there's no movement at all or these holes sort of fill themselves in um, so we don't have a lot of volcanic activity for example here in the midwest there actually was a lot of volcanic activity a long time ago but now we don't have any volcanic activity because that rift has actually sort of filled itself in and become dormant. So uh, even though we were able to have, we had volcanic activity about two billion years ago or so, we don't have any volcanic activity here in the Midwest now. And so, uh, Paula, you mentioned some of those volcanoes in the Midwest. There actually were some here, right here in the state of Michigan in the Upper Peninsula. Where were some of those located? Uh, and you mentioned now because those rifts in, in the, the earth were then filled in, they're, they're dormant. Are those uh, volcanoes still in existence uh, and, be, and able to be seen despite being dormant? Yeah, absolutely. So the volcanoes in the Upper Peninsula actually helped to form Lake Superior and the area around there. Um, because of the volcanoes that we have in the Upper Peninsula here in Michigan, we actually have a lot of copper and a lot of heavier metals. Um, those were actually formed by that volcanic activity. And you can see a lot of those volcanic rocks, specifically when you take a look at um, sort of the edge of the the edge of and the cliffs down into Lake Superior, you're able to see um, some volcanic rock. Some of it is normal rock that we would normally expect in that area, but some of it is also volcanic rock. And it's very interesting uh, to sort of take a look at that area because we didn't know it was volcanically active until relatively recently. We're joined by Paulette Epstein, the astronomer and planetarium director over at the Michigan Science Center. More information on the website, mi-sci.org or mi-sci.org to learn more about all the activities over there at the Michigan Science Center. And so um, the last major volcano that erupted here in the U.S. was Mount St. Helens, uh, but there are uh, plenty of other volcanoes that are located in the U.S., including that super volcano you mentioned uh, at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, that timeline on when these volcanoes go go into a period of activity versus a period of, of dormancy, it varies location to location. It all really depends on the movement of the tectonic plates in the Earth. Uh, are there any volcanoes in the U.S. At, at the t off the top of your head uh, that you know at this time may be close to that point in the in the estimation where they may be active again soon? Well, so it's funny that you say that because the supervolcano at Yellowstone is is actually at that point we think that it could potentially start to be more active uh, relatively soon and when i say relatively soon we are talking about in the history of the earth so it could happen sure. in the next million years or so um, but um that is relatively soon in our timeline it could be tomorrow it could be in a million years we don't know um, but yellowstone has actually become a little more volcanically like we can tell that there's a little bit more activity happening in yellowstone and that it's sort of coming out of that dormancy. Um, and so we've definitely been keeping an eye on that one because it is a huge, huge volcano. Um, and if it erupts, it will not only affect us here in the United States, it won't just affect uh, people in the Western United States, it'll affect us here in Michigan, and it will also affect the entire world because that volcano is so big. And, and so, um, Paulette, how do you go about predicting when volcanoes may be active again or when that activity may come to a point of eruption. How do, uh, how do experts that are tracking this information ultimately predict when, or forecast even, when these eruptions could happen or that activity could come back? Yeah, absolutely. So they, they track it in a couple of different ways. They track it by, um, feeling the seismic activity around the area. So um, the more seismic activity, the more active the volcano is going to become. They also can track it using um, just signs and, and things. Uh, so for example, I said that the, the, the super volcano in Yellowstone is becoming slightly more active. And so what we're seeing is we're actually seeing more geysers, we're seeing more heat, we're seeing things that 
um, that point us to the direction that it could potentially become more active in the near future. So that seismic activity or the, the vibrations of the earth are really what pushes us uh, to be able to um, to get a better idea of when these volcanoes are going to become more active, but also just watching them um, and noticing even slight changes that are happening. Uh, another thing that actually happens is animals can sense it before humans do. So a lot of times like animals will clear the area around a volcano before it erupts um, so that they are safer. Um, and so following animals and how they move their migration patterns, all of that can also uh, give us clues as to when volcanoes are becoming more active and when they could potentially erupt. We're joined by Paulette Epstein, planetarium director and astronomer over at the Michigan Science Center. Uh, the, their showing of Fires of Creation opens February 19th uh, in its Toyota Engineering Four-Dimensional Theater. The Michigan Science Center uh, will have more information on that online on the website mi-sci.org. That's mi-sci.org to learn more information. Paulette, how long will this uh, film be showing uh, over at the Michigan Science Center? We do plan to show this film through the end of this year. Um, so uh, it'll start, like I said, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday are our open, it's our opening weekend for this movie. Um, and we do plan to, to show it through the end of the year in our Toyota Engineering 4D Theater. To learn more information about uh, Fires of Creation when you can see this uh, film, this IMAX film in their four dimensional theater of the Michigan Science Center by visiting mi-sci.org. Paulette, thank you very much for joining us. Yes, thank you so much.